So far we have estimated mass divisivity in gases and an approximate order of magnitude for such divisivities is 10 to the power of minus 5 square meter per second. For liquids you usually have lower than that so 10 to the power of minus 5 all the way down to 10 to the power of minus 12 uh, and solids 10 to the power of minus 12 approximately. What a liquid is well that depends there are liquids that don't look like liquids so hence the very large range of divisivities. So how do we estimate mass divisivity in liquids? Well we will look at two different equations the Stoke-Einstein equation and the Wilkes-Chang equation. The Stoke-Einstein equation considers a very large molecule so large that the surrounding liquid can be treated as a continuum that it makes it much much easier to think about uh, and you what it stems from is actually force balance and the derivation is rather simple uh, but we won't go through the, it here but if you are interested you can look in my compendium and in most other books about diffusion so if it's a large molecule then it's stoke einstein equation different literature sources use slightly different ranges so when you should use Stock Einstein and when you should use Wilkes-Chang equation but if you use the handbook uh, we have made then you have the numbers in there approximately where you should shift from Wilkes-Chang to Stock Einstein. The Stock Einstein equation looks like this and the Wilkes-Chang equation looks like this. Wilkes-Chang equation is I would say much more difficult to understand how why it looks like it does uh, so it's not easy to derive but it gets reasonable results so what you have here is phi is an association parameter and you have to look that up and interestingly enough uh, for water literature sources don't agree what va the value should be 2.6 or 2.26 then it should be the molecular weight of the solvent in SI units, so kilograms per mole, the temperature, SI units as well, Kelvin, and then the viscosity of, of the solution, not uh, the solute, not the solvent, the solution. And then you have the molar volume at the boiling point uh, there for the solute. Note here, that this is temperature dependent right just as the stock einstein equation is temperature dependent and in both cases you have the viscosity of the solution but the viscosity of the solution is also temperature dependent and it's also concentration dependent right if you have a water solution of sugar the higher the concentration of sugar the higher the viscosity but if you have really, really low concentrations, you usually can say that, okay, the viscosity of solution is probably the same as the viscosity of the solvent, but not if you have high uh, concentrations. And for some polymers, what is considered a, a low concentration is perhaps ridiculously low because even very small amounts of some polymers in a water solution can change the viscosity drastically. Just to sum up uh, diffusion and mass transport, we have learned that mass transport is proportional to the diffusivity, it's proportional to the concentration gradient, and it's proportional to the inverse of the distance. And that we have similar transport of heat, mass, and momentum, and thus sometimes we get diffusivities that are equal for mass, heat, and momentum. And when I say that mass transport is tra proportional to diffusivity, we will soon see that that might not be the case in all situations. When we move into two film theory, penetration theory, and boundary layer theory, we will see that it's not really the case always.